now since it's been known to being kind of mentioned to me, I should maybe do the volumes instead of actually reviewing chapters. My plan was actually to review the the chat like on the volumes as a whole. It's like that I'm probably get it through quite quickly, up to about sixty one. Which is actually volume sixteen, so if I technically do it one a day, I'll probably just reach up to where the new chapter is by hopefully two weeks time, when the next chapter might just come out. So yeah, I'll have myself have my work cut out for me for the rest of the week and two weeks later. So yeah, chapters two and three. I mean, it's in a volume one review, but it's kind of two and three because one's already been done. So one was basically the footing for all into the sit and see if maybe it's popular enough for me to actually carry on. It was actually. I mean, it got it got enough it got enough for me to say, you know what, let's carry this on. So yeah, volume one as a whole was pretty damn great. Like it kind of had more exposition than the actual anime ever did. And for the most part, I kind of like it a bit more because, again, in certain situations, I like clarity because sometimes thing, things, can get, things can get left behind and I don't understand what's going on sometimes. And I think the anime did that sometimes, not all the time. Like, most of the time, I was kind of no, I was more coherent. Other times, I was like, oh, God, where am I? Where am I? It's kind of what happened. I think this, I watched this way in my infancy of watching anime, like, last year, like, in the summer when it first, like, finished. And yeah, I was kind of a bit confused, and I watched the dub afterwards, and I kind of was like, yeah, I don't know where I am now. And then Norigamirogata came out. But yeah, I mean, as a whole, damn good volume. Like, it had its it had its fair share of character development, even in one, two chapters. I mean, even the chemistry between Huyori and um, Yato was practically there, even from the first time they ever met. And it just developed from then on. And I think, as a whole, it does actually warrant itself better than something the anime does. I mean, the anime does have its chemistry, does, and I think that's basically... One of the strengths I can see with the anime over anything else is the fact that the chemistry is so great in the anime. You get invested in the characters, and when you see something happen to them, you kind of get brokenhearted. And I think maybe the manga might do even better. So hopefully the scene when everyone dies practically in the Bishop of Luck does not break my heart even more than it did in the actual anime. I could probably see it happening, but hopefully not. But I mean, yeah, it just... I don't. I like. I love. I, I love how they're like kind of handling the manga. I mean, as a whole, I kind of went into this thinking like I was gonna get the exact same, or I'm basically just retreading on events that like I was seeing in the anime. And I thought maybe I might get bored after all. No, I think the pacing of the manga is freaking great. Like the manga itself is actually paced so like, goddamn well for how long it actually is. I mean, a fifty-page manga can bore me to death sometimes. This one doesn't. This one has so much stuff that it kind of makes me kind of go, yeah, but sometimes some of the words aren't translated, so Ayakashi, which is the, I'm guessing is the phantoms themselves, it comes like, Ayakashi, and I realised, oh, phantoms, and then also there was the, getting blighted as well, it wasn't actually technically used in the chapter, but I'm guessing that it was blighted as well, so yeah, I mean, there were certain things that weren't translated, or were basically left out, but I still knew what they were, so I wasn't, again, I wasn't complaining too much, and I kind of got some more clarity on the Ayakashi, even even in the kind of chapter we had with chapter two, it just or no chapter three, it just developed it developed their like kind of who they are and what they do and basically how they can see it and perceive it in the world. Like no one can see it besides children and animals and basically yeah, I mean it just felt like I needed this and it basically told me what I needed to know. So now forward, I know what to, I, I can know what to say when I review it. I went so I can complete idiot. And then also we kind of got some more stuff. I mean. One thing that was kind of lacking in the anime is the fact that um, Hiro was a fan of wrestling. Like, I can't ever remember them mentioning in season 2 that she was actually a fan. Like, I think they kind of dropped the idea. I mean, it, I completely forgot about it. And I realised that when I read the manga, I was like, oh yeah, she's a fan of the ma of the wrestling. And the only thing that makes me remember it in the anime is the fact that she uses wrestling moves. I mean, that's the only thing that makes me remember. But if I remember correctly, from the whole of this season 2, there was never dare mention that, oh yeah, these wrestling. And also, there's a lot of entrance exams. Like, I've realised this. There's a lot of extra entries in this anime and manga. But, yeah. I mean, as a whole, damn good. I mean, hopefully... Hopefully, he'll be arc, and hopefully the Bishop Moil arc does actually improve, because anime, I guess... Anime, I can see, it was it technically did kind of rush events, even though... I, I, as I said before, sometimes rushing doesn't actually man, mean the story is disjointed. I mean, sometimes rushing can actually make the, an, make the anime kind of slightly better. I mean, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I mean... I mean, Prison Squad live action works because the story doesn't feel disjointed. Because sometimes you get rushed and it just feels disjointed. You don't know where stuff are coming from. And that happened with uh, 35 Test Platoon. I didn't know what the F was going on because it was just springboarding plot points out of nowhere. It was like kind of like, what the F's going on here? This one and the anime itself, you still kind of got a firm fitting of what's going on. But you didn't really feel like it was ru it was kind of like, yeah, rushing through the events. But it wasn't kind of disjointing the narrative at the exact same time. Because sometimes... 
Russian can actually hurt the narrative. In Noragami, it's the only exception I can actually probably see right now that the Russian doesn't disjoint the narrative. And I think that's one of the kind of key strengths I can see with Bones. They can cut stuff, but the stuff they cut doesn't disjoint the narrative. Just cut It cuts stuff out. And I think as a whole, these two chapters weren't too cut. Like, there was nothing cut out or put in or stuff was changed around. So I was kind of like, yeah, you know what? so far faithful he didn't really change very much that's why that's why i haven't mentioned any mentioned anything that was changed because i don't remember anything changed from these two chapters in the anime so yeah before my breath gets completely lost so yeah it kind of just it just felt like I, I knew what i was i knew what was going on i just knew knew from the anime events but sometimes bones are kind of good when it comes to taking events out and putting new events back in i mean yeah Maybe if I read the manga a bit more, I can probably understand that, yeah, maybe they did take it out. It doesn't actually work very well. But sometimes, again, it it kind of feels a bit... I have a weird relationship when it comes to cutting events out because if it's not too badly done, it doesn't actually feel like it's been left out. But an anime only, only watcher will not notice. Like, some people will say, oh, yeah, I've not noticed this happened. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I can understand that. But if the manga really kind of said, oh, yeah... Uh, Fujikashi's like development was taken out completely. I could probably say, yeah, he, he did because it, basically he did. I mean, I noticed that. And I didn't even read the manga. His like development got completely cut out. So yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm getting a bit off topic here because I'm quite passionate about bones, but still, I mean, it's just I like these chapters because it basically even introduced Yukine as well. I didn't even mention Yukine. It, made, it introduced Yukine, and I can I can remember how much of Barstool he was at the beginning of the manga and anime. Like I completely forgot, and I realized he was a complete Barstool towards Yato. Like he was just a teenager basically towards his parents, and I think it just it kind of felt like a like ah, oh. I mean because after a while he begins to get like more and more attached to Yato and. Thing that you don't really want to see anything bad happening to him, and it's kind of like, ah, oh. then at the beginning, you're like, he's a complete butt nut. I think that's what one of the good things that that's kind of virtual perception of characters because sometimes it does actually happen. I mean, I, I guess again, forward into the anime, EBC was kind of the prime example. I thought he was going to be the enemy, he wasn't. I was like, oh, surprising. So it can actually avert your perception of the character. If you're going backwards in time and realizing he's a complete butt nut, when you go forward in time, you know, this is a pretty damn cool character. And yeah, I mean, the fights themselves are pretty damn well drawn, even if they're damn well animated in the anime. They're still well drawn in the actual manga, and I think the art itself is freaking great. And I just, I like Yukine. Like, he's one of my favourite characters. You know, Kofuku is my favourite. I think Kofuku is my favourite. He always the best girl, but he is my favourite character. I think Yukine is my second favourite, because he just gets to develop when he needs to, and he just gets developed so much that he can actually become invested in this kind of storyline. And I think it's kind of like almost a hit-home kind of storyline as well. But yeah, I mean, as a whole... Dang great volumes. Almost did forget to mention Yukine as well. I'm getting a bit off topic. My brain kind of goes a bit. But I mean, yeah. I guess with all that said, that was volume one, chapter one to three of Noragami. Hopefully I can get the next couple out in the next couple of days. Because maybe, I don't know how, I don't know how well my schedule is going to go because they're kind of spontaneous. And it is New Year as well. So to everyone that's watching this, Happy New Year. To everyone single every European person that watches my video and it's probably about fall in time, happy new year and if you live in Spain, please annual nuevo because I speak Spanish as well. So, kind of a nice thing to know, I can speak Spanish. But yeah, I mean, and also in, anyone who lives in Australia, happy new year because it actually is, actually is new year in Australia. But yeah, I mean, happy fracking new year. 2016 is here. Well, not from, yeah, because it's like five hours time for here. But yeah, I'm speaking forward in time, I'm actually a time traveller as well. But yeah, I mean, whenever you're watching this, Happy New Year. If you're watching this, like, right now, good job. You made it here. Hopefully next year will be good. Maybe all your wishes come true. That sounds pretty... I mean, with all that said, I mean, my brain is going fried right now. But with all that said, I have been the driver. If you want to leave a like, do leave a like. If you want to leave a sub, do leave a sub. It has quite a bit. With all that said, I have been the driver. And I will see you guys later. Bye for now.